hello everyone welcome to the makri virtual hope you are doing good today i'm going to continue with your chapter number 9 that is virtual memory in the last class we have discussed what is virtual memory and how it is used and the today's topic is a uh, uh, topic number 7 that is intel core i7 that is the linux memory system that is the case study that is how linux memory system is used or how Uh, memory system that is a new one or the advanced one that is the i7 that is Intel 7 is used for the Linux operating system. Prior class uh, that that was scheduled on Friday uh, that was cancelled due to some technical reason due to some uh, reason but now the same topic is uh, available or the same topic is held on uh, that is the Linux memory system that is the same topic as we discussed on the. Uh, as we have to discuss on the Friday, right? So uh, first of all, let's take a quick review what we have covered in the last class. in the last class we have studied what is the memory protection and how memory will be protected with the help of the virtual memory in this we have studied what is the raw memory that is a large array collection of words and the data address binding what is address binding that is a mapping of the address binding how the compilation work is done that is a dynamic loading we have discussed with the help of the book so let's see uh, in the book also In the last class, we have uh, started with the VM as a tool for the memory management. That is how virtual memory is used as a tool for the managing the memory. That is, is use how virtual memory is used as a tool for the memory management. In this, we have studied uh, like what are the advantages why we are using the virtual memory. That simplifies the loading, linking, sharing, allocation memory to the application. So these uh, all are points that shows that how virtual memory. is applied or how virtual memory is used for the memory management so what are the uh, methods or how virtual memory simplifies so what are the uh, advantages why we are using the virtual memory these are the advantages it simplifies the linking simplifies the loading simplifies the sharing simplifies the memory lo- allocation these are the five points or the four points that we have studied that how virtual memory or these are the tools that is available to how virtual memory is uh, can be used as a tool for the memory management so these are the tools or these are the methods how uh, virtual memory is used then we have studied how virtual memory is used as a tool for the memory protection so first of all we have studied how a vm is used as a tool for the memory management then how vm is used as a tool for the memory protection so so we have studied uh two concepts that the important concept one is memory protection one is memory management in this we have studied how protection that is the security can be enhanced with the help of the via uh, sorry with the help of the vm with the help of the concept that is cia confidentiality and integrity availability that is the cia this uh, this paragraph says any modern system must provides a mean for the operating system to control access to the memory system a user process should not be always to modify its read only text document read only text section nor it should be allowed to read or modify any of the code in the kernel it should be allowed to read the private part of other processes and it should not be allowed to take over the or take to modify any virtual pages that are shared with the other processes 
So we have discussed how memory protection is used or how memory protection is applicable with the help of the virtual memory in the last class. This is the example that shows the memory protection. These are the shared files that is a read write address. Then we have discussed the important concept, important topic that is the address translation. That is how one address can be converted into the another one. That is how one address, uh, suppose our address of one location, that is, a, that is a new location, how that address is converted into the next address, into the next form, that is the address translation. So that also uh, is done by using the VM, that is a virtual memory. So this says this section covers the basics of the address translation. Our aim is to give give you an appreciation of the hardware role in supporting the virtual memory. That is how hardware is supported or hard, how a hardware is supporting the virtual memory. That is done by the address translation. Suppose I have written one uh, algorithm or I have written one example that is in a different process. After some time. If I wish to change the address, that can be done by the address translation. So that location of the object can be changed from one place to the another place. These are the symbols that is used. One is VPO, that is virtual page offset. One is VPN, that is virtual page number. TLBI, TLBT, PPO, PPN. These are the various symbols that is used for the address translation that we have studied in the last class. This is the most important that is your physical page number. One is your physical page number, one is your virtual page number. And the main difference is that in the virtual page number is used whenever we have finished with the physical page number. That is your PPN. One is the PTBR that is your page table base register that points to or that is used for the current page table. That is the how currently the page table or the how currently the table will be used for the page number. This is the example how virtual or how address translation is done with the page table that we have studied in the last class. This is the example that shows uh, one virtual page number is used, one virtual page offset is used and how one virtual page set is converted into the physical page number with the help of the valid bit. Valid bit may be either 0 or 1 that is in terms of the 0 or the 1. This says if valid equals to zero, then page is not in the memory. This is the valid bit. This shows th whether the page is available in the memory or not. If it is zero, the page is not available. If it is one, the page is available in the memory. This uh, figure shows the steps that how CPU performs the hardware or how CPU hardware performs whenever there is a page hit. Page hit means page is available in the memory. And the page fault or the page miss is that the page is not available in the memory. We have to fetch the page from the virtual memory or with the use of the virtual memory. So these are the steps available. How to uh, generate or uh, how to perform the operations with the help of the cache memory, with the help of the CPU. Whenever there is a page, whenever there is a page that is a page, it is available in the hardware performance. This is the example of the page hit. One is processor, MMU, cache memory. This is also the page fault example. So one is page hit, that is that page is available. One is page fault. In this, there is no need for the victim page. There is no need for the cache memory. Direct communication is done between the cache memory and the memory unit. Means data is simply fetched from the memory and used for the used by the CPU for the processing. But in the page fold, there is a victim page that is a page fold exception handler that uh, accepts the pages or that uh, fetches the pages and brings the pages to the disk so that uh, we can use the page in the in case page is not available in the virtual memory. Then uh, this is the diagram that shows how to integrate VM with the physically addressed cache that we have studied in the last class. 
then we have studied how to integrate the cache and the vm that is how cache memory is integrated with the virtual memory then how to speed up the address translation with the use of the tlb that is your translation look si buffer that is how tlb is used to speed up the address translation so that address is translated from one part to the another that is from one place to the another place This says a TLB is a small virtual address cache where each line holds a block consisting of a single PTE. This is a component of the virtual address that are used using the TLB that is your translation look SI buffer. So these are the multiple steps that is used that is performed on the MMU that is your memory management unit. Then we also studied about the multi-level page table that is how more than one table that is a uh, more than one means multi-level page table are used for the virtual memory for memory management or memory protection or for address translation. Till now we have covered how single page table is used for the address translation but now the next concept is that how multiple tables that is your multi-level page table is used for the address translation. This is example whenever there is a TLB hit that is a translation look aside buffer is available and whenever there is a TLB miss. This is example of multiple or multi level page table that is level 1 page table that is level 2 page table then there is a virtual memory. So these are the two levels of pages or page tables and, and then there is a virtual memory. This is putting in together end-to-end -to -end address translation. That is how end-to-end -end address translation is performed with the help of the virtual memory. These are the examples or these are the diagrams that we have discussed in the last class. Then we also studied what is the TLB that is the important part, what is a page table, what is a cache memory. This says a page table is a single level design with a total capacity of 2 power 8 that is the 256 table entries that is your T, uh, PTE that is your total of 256 PTE page table entries that, that is a combination of 2 power 8 that is the 256. One is the TLB that is a virtual address using the bits of the VPN that is your virtual page number then cache that is used for the physical address then we are discuss about the problem that is how problem is used these are the problem that is used now Next concept is your that is a today's concept the Intel Core i7 Linux memory system. This is the case study. Case study means this is the example how Linux memory system is used uh, whenever we are using the virtual memory. This says we conclude our discussion of virtual memory mechanism with the case study of a real system. Means this is the example of a real system that is a scenario based system. The uh, name of the system is Intel Core i7 or the i7 running Linux. That is i7 processor is used on which Linux or um, that is operated on the Linux. That is the Linux is the operating system on which we are running the i7 processor. So one is operating system, one is your processor. So on the operating system, a processor is executing or processor is run. This is the core i7 is based on the NLM's micro architecture. Although the NLM's design allows for the full 64-bit virtual and the physical address spaces. But 
the current i7 administrator or the implementation and those for the foreseeable with the foreseeable future supports the 48 bits that is your 256 tb virtual address space and a 52 that is your 4 pb physical address space so this says whenever we implement the i7 or whenever we uh, apply the i7 on the linux operating system this is the requirement that it support or that it requires 48 bit virtual address and 52 bit physical address space with the compatibility mode that supports the 32 bit virtual and the physical address it does not mean that if i am bringing the 64 bit address that does not run on the 32 bit no there is a compatibility there is a flexibility on the operating system that if the uh, i7 is uh, available or i7 is used in the 32 bit that can also be used for the 64 bit address Figure 21 shows or highlights the core i7 memory system. The processor package includes four cores, that is a large L3 cache that is shared by all the cores and a, this is a, a diagram, that is a package processor or the i7 memory system. So let's see, first of all there is a register that is a part of the memory that is used for storing the data. Then instruction fetch that is that is the instruction fetching from the l1 cache or l1 cache fetches the instruction that is done by the instruction fetch there is a l1 d cache 32 kb 8 bit this is the l1 i cache one is d cache one is i cache same capacity 32 bit 8 bit 8 bit means there are 8 bits or there are uh, total 8 bits available that start from the 0 and ending with the 7 then the combination of L1 is uh, combined into the L2 unified cache that is of capacity of 256 KB that is also of 8 bit. Then that is combined into or that is going into the uh, L3 unified cache that is the capacity of the 8 MB that is the uh, 16 bit that is the 16 uh, lines are used for the cache memory that is shared by all the cores that is a uh, sharing of all the cores or share shared by all the cores of the L3 unified cache. So th these are the three cache memory that is used. One is L1, one is L2, one is L3. Then address translation is done by the MMU that is your memory management unit. This is the L1 same. This is the TLB that is TLB is used. This is T, uh, DTLB. This is ITLB. This is for 64 entries. This is for 128 entries. That is combined into the L2 unified TLB that is of 512 entries. So one is of 64, one is of 128. That both are combined into the L1 unified TLB that is of 512 entries or the 512 entries that is of four way. Then there is a quick path interconnection that connects the lines within the i7 processor. This is the diagram that shows how i3 processor is used and that can be shared by using the main memory. Each core contains a hierarchy of TLBs. That is, a each core means each uh, part of the I7 contains a hierarchy of the TLB. That is, your translation look aside buffer. A hierarchy of data and instruction cache and a set of the fast point-to-point -point links. Then next is your core i7 address or core i7 address translation. That is how address translation is done for in the core i7. That is the i7 processor. This is the way how uh, address translation is done in the core i7. This is figure 22 summarizes the entire core i7 address translation. This is the figure 22 that explains how 
uh, uh, i7 address translation is performed one is your cpu one is your virtual address that is a va then there is a result l2 l3 and the main memory there is a vpn that is your virtual page number virtual page offset there is a tlbt there is a tlb i and these are the two ppos and the ppn variables then uh, this shows whenever there is a l1 hit that is if there is a l1 hit that is a data is available or the page is available in the memory then there is a l1 hit then l1 miss that is the page is not available in the memory then there is a, a tlb hit so this uh, right hand portion is depending on the l1 cache memory and the left hand portion is depend on the or using the tlb that is a translation look aside buffer so one is your l1 hit one is your l1 miss one is your tlb miss one is your tlb hit then there is a vpn 1 2 3 4 then there is a ppn ppo ct ci co that is your virtual address physical address that is a pa then there is a page tables that is your ppe So this shows the address translation one is your cpu one is your l2 l3 and the main memory in the cpu there is a virtual address and then there is a vpn vpo there is a tlbt tlb i whenever there is a tlb hit the data is gone to the ppn that is your physical page number then if the vpo is available then that goes to the ppo that is your physical page offset so if data is available simply vpn is converted that is a virtual page address is converted into the ppn and the uh, vpo is converted into the ppo and whenever there is a l1 hit so l1 uh, or the data is fetched from the l1 cache and whenever there is l1 miss miss the, so the data is available or data is fetched from the l2 l3 and the main memory then uh, whenever there is a l1 miss the data is available and that can be fetched and passed to the physical address that is your pa this says each address each process has its own public uh, sorry private pa pa page table hierarchy when a linux process is running the page table associated with allocated pages are all memory resident although the Core i7 architecture allows these page table to be swapped in and out. That is the page tables or the page table entries are swapped in and the swap out. These are the fields that is shown or that is used that is available for the operating system. One is your P that is shows or the, the description is that this is the child page table that present in the physical memory that is the one or the node zero. Then IW that is a read only memory or the read write access permission. Read write per address permission that is available or that is used for the reachable pages. Then US that is a user or the uh, supervisor. That is a user or the supervisor that is used. Then there is a CD that is used for the caching disabled or enabled for the child page tables. Then A that is used as a reference group. Then PS that is a page size that is either of 4 KB or the 4 MB. Then there is a page address. Page address means the address of the page that is used for the child page table. Then XP that is used for the instruction fetcher from all the pages that is disabled or reach. Uh, that is a disable or the enable instruction so these are the multiple fields and the description that shows how entries is done in the child page table now let's see with the help of some ppt's Your chapter number 9 continued, that is your virtual memory continued. Uh, one is your, uh, the topic is your Linux memory system. As I told you, we have studied the um, case study that is based on the Linux operating system or the Linux memory system. 
this uh, this is based on the intel q6 and our uh, criteria is based on the i7 the concept is same the criteria is same but it depends on the capacity to capacity to processor from processor this is intel q6 and in book it is given intel i7 so it depends on the processor to the processor this is internal designation for processor to the pentium pentium has internal designation p5 that is it is the internal uh, capacity of the p5 or the pentium 5 fundamentally different from the pentium out of order the same concept resulting processors are that is the um, prior processors are pentium pro that is available in the 1996 pentium 2 that is available in 1997 then incorporated mnx instructions special instructions for the parallel processing l2 cache on the same chip then pentium 3 that is available in the 1999 then p6 memory system this is the example this is the diagram that shows how p6 memory system is used one is your dynamic ram that is used then external system bus that is your pci example is pci then l2 cache the same concept if the data is available then uh, we can use either cache memory or either tlb that is the address translation is done with the help of the cache memory or with the help of the tlb uh, yeah, on the left hand side it shows that there is a cache memory that is used and in the right hand side there is a tlb that is uh, data is available with the help of the translation look aside buffer so this shows how uh, memory system or how address translation is done with the help of the cache memory with the help of the TLB. Then uh, next is uh, next slide shows the abbreviation, the symbol that is used that I told you. Uh, the symbol that are used, the components that are used are uh, that is used in the virtual address are VPO that is your virtual page offset, VPN that is your virtual page number, TLBI that is your translation look aside buffer index one is your TLBT translation look aside buffer tag then next is a component of the physical address that is a PA the same PPO PPN CO CI CP these are the abbreviations that is used uh, in terms of the physical address in terms of the virtual address in physical address there is a PPO that is a physical page offset PPN physical uh, page number byte offset that is uh, denoted by the CO cache index cache tag this is the overview of the p6 address translation that I told you with the help of the i7 processor in the left hand side there is a TLB that is your translation look aside buffer that is used for the address translation on the right hand side there is a now uh, L1 cache that is used for the address translation then this is a two level page table structure that is how more than one table are used for the uh, i7 or the for the p6 address translation of the p6 linux memory system Let's see with the help of the book. The same concept is used for the translation, the same abbreviation is used, their description is used, the same concept is used. is a uh, uh, um, diagram that shows the how page table translation is done the same concept as I told you with the help of the uh, PPT this is a page table structure the same page table structure is here the same concept so one is your PP one, PP, VPN 1 that is your virtual page number 2 3 4 and there is a virtual page offset then this this line shows the virtual address and there is a offset into the physical and the virtual page that is the VPN is converted into the L1PT that is your page global directory 
then L2PT, so it is a page upper directory, then page middle directory, then page table. These are the page table that is used or that is used for the PTE. Then uh, this is L1 PTE, then L2 PTE, L3 PTE, L4 PTE. Then there is a 512 GB reason per entry. This is of 1 GB, this is of 2 MB, this is of 4 KB. Then there is a physical address of the page. Means this is a line that shows the virtual address. This is a line that shows the physical address. Between these, between these means between the virtual address and the physical address, there is a PTE that is divided into four parts. That is L1, L2, L3, and the L4. So this diagram shows how address translation is done with the help of the page table. This shows the PTE page table, PTE page table entry, virtual pa page number, virtual page offset, the same uh, abbreviation that is used as I told you earlier. Then next is your Linux virtual memory system. A virtual memory system requires close cooperation between the hardware and the kernel. Details vary from the version to the version and a complete description is beyond our scope. None, none, nonetheless, the, our aim in this section is to describe enough of the Linux virtual system to give you a sense how a real operating system organizes the virtual memory and how it handles the page board. So the main concept or the main thing is that how Linux virtual memory is used or how that memory system is used and uh, what is a detail conversion or what is a detailed thing that is used how we organize the or how operating system organizes in the virtual memory and how it handles the page port this says linux maintains a separate virtual address space for each process of the form uh, that is shown in the figure 26 the kernel virtual address contains the code and the data structure in the kernel this shows or this says the kernel virtual memory that is used that contains the code as well as the data structure that is used in the kernel that is the main part of the computer system that is the main part of the operating system some reasons of the kernel virtual memory are post viewed or mapped to the physical pages that is the most of the virtual pages are mapped or the uh, combined or related with the physical pages that are shared by all the processes for example each process shares the kernel code and the global data structure this provides the kernel with the view a convenient way to access any co specific co location in the physical memory for example this is the example or sorry this is the diagram that shows the virtual memory of a linux system this is the user stack this is the esp there is a blank space there is a uh, uninitialized data, initialized data, program text. Then there is a runtime heap that is done by the malloc. There is a process virtual memory. There is a kernel virtual memory. So this process or the entire virtual memory is divided into two parts. One is your kernel virtual memory. One is your process virtual memory. In the uh, kernel process memory, uh, sorry, kernel virtual memory, there is a different for different processes. That is the different data structure is used for the different process and the physical memory is identical for every process one is your kernel code and the data that is identical for each and the every process one is your user stack that is also used for the each process one is esp then memory map reason then brk that is the break part then one is your runtime heap that is done by using the malloc function uninitialized data initialized data program text so this is a virtual memory address for the Linux process. For example, when it needs to access the page table, that is whenever there is a requirement for the page table or perform any memory input output operations on the devices that are mapped to the particular physical memory location. Then next is your Linux virtual memory areas. Uh, till now we have discussed the Linux virtual memory. Now, what are the areas that is used for the Linux virtual memory areas? This says Linux organizes the virtual memory as a collection of the areas. So that means the main memory or the virtual memory is divided into the different areas that are known as the segment. Uh, 
an area is a contiguous chunk of the existing virtual memory that is it is a chunk or it is a combination of the existing virtual memory whose pages are related in some way that is the pages are related in the uh, one or the more way or in one after the another for example the different areas are one is used for the code that is known as the code segment one is used for the data that is known as the data segment one is used for the heap that is for the heap memory that is known as the heap segment one is one is uh, used as a library or in which we can store the library function that is known as the shared library argument one is the user stack for the different or for the distinct areas each existing virtual page is contained in some area and any virtual page that is not a part of some area does not exist and cannot be referenced by the process this shows uh, this says that different memory areas are allocated to the different processes that is code is uh, is the different part area is a different part data is a different part data segment is a different part heap is a different part library arguments are the different part so uh, that means every part or the every field is divided into the separate one it divided into the multiple parts that is known as the linux virtual memory areas that is also known as the segment this says figure 29 highlights the kernel data structure that keep tracks of the virtual memory areas in the process this mainti maintains a distinct stack structure that is a task struct in the source code for each process in the system the elements of the task this is the task structure one is your mm struct this is the mm then pgd then memory map that is your mmap then vm area structure that is the area structure that is used for the virtual memory then there is a vm end start float flag then there is a next part end again start float flag next part this next part is going to the next one that is the end start float flag next this is a process virtual memory that is the vm end is converted or going to the shared library this is going to the data this is going to the data and the text this shows how linux organizes the virtual memory that is how virtual memory is organized in the form of a libraries in the form of a data in the form of a in the form of the text that is how virtual memory is divided into multiple area into multiple segments one is the code segment one is the area segment one is the heap segment one is the malloc segment that is a memory allocation so these are the different areas or these are the different blocks that is known as the segment in the virtual memory so this shows how linux organizes the virtual memory this is one of the entries in the task structure points to an mm structure that characterizes the current state of the virtual memory this is the mm structure that uh, differentiate or that in, in identifies the feature of the structure element that is used the two fields of the interest to us are pgd which points to the base of the level 1 field for our purpose the area structs for a particular area Uh, con uh, contains the following field. So this contains the following field. One is VM end start float flag. Now let's see one by one what is the meaning of each indi each and individual one. VM track, as I told you, it points to the beginning of the area. That is the beginning means the starting phase from where the uh, the code will be started or the code is started. That is the VM start. Then VM end that points to the end of the area end of the area means that points to that it is the last stage beyond this there is no area beyond this there is no memory that is used one is your vm float that describes the read write permissions that is available there are three types of permissions that is available one is read one is write one is execute so vm float describes the read write permissions for all of the pages contained in the area one is your vm flag 
that describes whether the pages in the area are shared with other processes or private to this process. That is the sh how sharing is done or what is the sharing criteria that is uh, done by using the field that is known as the VM flag. Then VM next that points to the next area struct in the list that points to the next part that uh, struct to the next area that point to the next area that struct in the list. So these are the fields that is available for any data structure. Next is your fly next page fold exception handling that is how uh, whenever there is a page fold for how Linux maintains or how Linux handles the page fold exception. This says suppose the MMU triggers a page fold as I told you whenever there is a page fold while trying to translate some virtual address a the exception results in the transfer of the control to the of the kernel page fold handler that is the whenever there is a page fold whenever the page is not available in the memory so that passes the control to the kernel page or that passes the control to the kernel that is denoted or that is accepted by the MMU that is your memory management unit and then uh, that is passed to the Linux page fold exception handler then that page fold exception handler performs the following steps to handle the page fold to handle the Linux page fold so what are the steps that is available is virtual address a legal in simple terms in other words does a lie within the area defined by the sum area struct that is uh, it identifies or it answers the question whether the area that is used as a virtual address is defined is legal or the no that is denoted or that is defined by the area struct that is defined by the structure struct next part is your next uh, step is your is the attempted memory access legal that is attempted memory means the memory that is targeted for accessing is a legal memory or not that is if i am using the memory that is not legal so there is a wastage of the resources of the operating system there is no need so first of all identifies or the page fold handler identifies whether the uh, attempted memory that is accessed or that is accessible is legal memory or the not This is the page handling, how page handling can be done. This is the segmentation uh, fold that is available at here. Normal page fold that is available at the data section. With this is your protection exception that is violating the read only operation. At this point, the kernel shows that the page fold resulted from a legal operation on a legal virtual address. So, first of all, check whether the data is available or the virtual address that is available is legal or not second whether the attempted memory access area or the attempted memory area is legal or, or not then whenever the, uh, these two criteria are fulfilled then we say that there is no page fold that is handled by the exception page or the exception handler so this is the way how exception handler uh, accepts the exceptions and the fulfill the operation and these are the, the different fold segments or the different areas where fold can occur. One is segmentation fold, normal page fold, protection, exception. It handles the fold by selecting a victim page, swapping them at the victim page if it is dirty. That is, if it is dirty, is how victim page is available or how victim page is swapped out from the Linux operating system. Uh, swapping in the new page and updating the page table the same concept so first of all uh, says whether the address is available or not whether the data is available or not or legal or not then swap the victim page to the new page that is available in the page table now let's see with the help of two tools the same concept that I told you the uh, how uh, address translation is done with the help of the page table this is a page table entries and abbreviations that is used this is a page directory entry that is uh, that I show you with the help of the book these are the entries these are the uh, fields that is used one is avail the bits are available global page page size access page 
then this is the criteria how address translation is done with the help of the paste table one is shows your uh, TLB one shows your session only this is the representation of the virtual address space this is the uh, how TLB is used for the translation that is the P6 TLB translation this is the L1 cache L2 cache that is the cache translation TLB entry is not all documentary so it is speculative V indicates a valid way so this is V this is PD this is either PDE1 or the PDE0 then tag this is the tag field this is the page directory or the page table entry this is the structure then how to translate with the P6 TLB that is studied in the with the help of book then how to translate with the page table entry this is the cache memory access this is the same concept Linux page fold handling the same operations or the same questions arises is the VA legal that is the legal the same concept this is a read write this is also read is the operation legal so first of all the virtual address is legal or not then the operation is legal or not if okay then handle the fold next is your memory mapping uh, that I will uh, tell you after break so first of all let's take 5 to 10 minutes break and then come back starting with the next topic that is your memory mapping that is the next topic so let's take 5 to 10 minutes break now let's start with the next topic that is your memory mapping uh, till now we have discussed uh, how Linux memory system is used next part is your memory mapping that is how mem memory mapping is done within the Linux operating system within the Linux memory system this shows uh, this is the Linux along with the other form of Unix initializes the content of the virtual memory area by associating it with an object on the disk a process is known as the map memory mapping this is it initializes or the initializes the content of the virtual memory area by associating it with the object or with an object on the disk that is how to initialize the content of the virtual memory by initializing or by uh, allocating or associating with an object on the disk that process that mapping is known as the memory mapping means in simple terms mapping the process mapping the object from one part to the another part from one object to the another disk that is known as a memory mapping areas can be mapped in any of the or two one of the two types of the object that is how mapping is done these are the two type of objects on which mapping is done one is on the basis of the regular file one is on the basis of the anonymous file so these are the two types of object that can be mapped in the Linux operating system in the Linux file system one is the regular file one is the anonymous file and now let's see what is a regular file an area that can be mapped to a contiguous section of a regular disk file such as executable object file this is a uh, this says an area can be mapped or this is a regular file can be mapped to a contiguous section of the regular disk file such as an executable object file the file section is divided into the page size pieces that is divided into the multiple blocks with each piece containing the initial content of the virtual page this is how area can be mapped by dividing the main page into the different sizes where each size contains the initial content initial content means the basic content that is used for the virtual page number because of the demand paging none of these virtual pages is actually swapped into the physical memory until the CPU fetches or touches the page that is the issue a virtual address that falls within the that page region in simple terms it says or it says that a, that area can be mapped into a contiguous si section of the regular size file where we can or where we can use the executable object file that file section is divided into the multiple chunks into the page size pieces where each piece or the where each piece contains the initial content of a virtual page then next is your next file that is used your anonymous file 
area that can also be moved to an anonymous file created by the kernel that contains all binary zeros. In regular file, it depends on the initial content of the virtual address that is used either 0 as the or the 1. But in the anonymous file, it can be moved to anonymous file created by the kernel that contains only the binary zeros. The first time the CPU touches a virtual page in the such an area, the kernel finds an appropriate victim page in the physical memory, swaps out the victim page if it is dirty, overrides the victim page with the binary zeros and updates the page table to mark the page as the resident. This is the way, first of all, kernel finds the appropriate the victim page, swaps the victim page from the memory, override the victim page with the binary zeros and update the page table entry in the, uh, uh, to mark the page as the resident. This is the way how anonymous file will be used. Notice that no data is actually transferred between the disk and the memory. For this reason, the pages in the area that are moved to the anonymous file are sometimes known as the demand zero pages. So these are the two types of objects that can be mapped with the help of the memory mapping. One is a regular file, one is the anonymous file or the anonymous file. And these files are sometimes also known as the demand zero pages. Why they are known as the demand zero pages? The main concept is that, the main reason is that these all contains the initial zeros or the binary zeros. If it is dirty, it is available and the victim page is swapped with the next one page that is the that contains all the leading all the all the initial zeros that's why they are also known as the demand zero pages in either case once a virtual page is initialized it is swapped back and forth between a special swapped file that is maintained by the kernel the swap file is also known as the swap space or the swap area so uh, whenever a victim page is swapped with the next page that swap area or the that swap file is known as the swap space or the swap area that is maintained by the kernel. An important point to realize is that any point in time the swap space bounds the total amount of physical or the virtual pages that can be allocated by the currently running processes. Next 8.1 is shared object revised. Revisited means uh, how uh, the shared object can be revisited we can see the revisited page that is a demand pages that is a victim page and the allocated pages so this is the way this is process one virtual memory physical memory this is the way how mapping is done between the virtual memory and the physical memory then process two there is a virtual memory then process one physical memory process two virtual memory so process 1 contains the virtual memory, process 2 contains the virtual memory and in between there is a shared process that is uh, known as the physical memory. So this is 1, 2, 3. Process 1, physical memory, process 2, virtual memory. This is a shared object that is the after process 1, that is after process 1, maps the sh shared object after process 2 map the shared object note that the physical pages are not necessary contiguous that is it is not mandatory that uh, we can map the shared object that is after process 1 uh, maps the uh, shared object after process 2 maps the shared object Now let's see with the help of the PPTs. This is uh, the memory mapping that is the creation of the new VM area that is the creation of the new virtual memory area done via memory mapping that is uh, how to create or how whenever we create the virtual memory area that is a new virtual memory area VM area that is done via the memory mapping. So in simple terms memory mapping is used to create the new VM area. 
then the next point says create the new vm area struct and the page table for the area that is how memory mapping it is done by creating the new a vm area struct that is the structure variable as well as the page table for the vm area area can be backed by that is we get get its initial values from the regular file that is the executable file that is the initial page bytes come from the section of the file or the nothing example bss that is the initial page bytes are zeros then next point says the dirty pages are swapped back and forth to end from a special swapped file as i told you the victim pages are replaced uh, replaced by the physical address or the physical pages that are swapped in that is known as the memory swapping that is the creation of the new vm area that is known as the memory mapping that what is the key point no virtual pages are copied into the physical memory until they are referenced that is no virtual pages are copied into the virtual mem or into the physical memory that is no communication is performed between the virtual memory and the physical memory until they are referenced until there is a requirement they are referenced they are not fetched with the one another whenever there is no requirement then next is your copy on write that is what is a copy on write this is a virtual memory area into which a shared object is mapped is known as the shared area it means the area in which the sharing of the object is done that is known as the shared area similarly for a private area private area that is not shared by the any this is an object can be mapped into an area of the virtual address that is the object can be mapped or the area can be mapped on the basis of the virtual memory that can be either shared object or the private object now what is a shared object that can be shareable or that can be shared uh, or uh, that can be used as a shared object on the basis of which we can share the object and map to the next area that is known as the shared area private objects are shared or mapped by using a clever technique known as the copy on the right that is the uh, how private objects are mapped into the virtual memory by using a clever technique that is known as the copy on the right so this is a technique copy on the right that is used for the private area a private object begins life in exactly the same way as a shared object with only one copy of the private object stored in the physical memory so this diagram shows uh, uh, or uh, shows the private copy on write object there is a process 1 there is a physical memory there is a process 2 there is a virtual memory this is also the virtual memory this is the virtual physical memory this is the virtual memory there is a private copy on write object this is the first process this is the second process in between there is a physical memory then next diagram sh uh, shows process 1 virtual memory physical memory process 2 virtual memory then copy on write object this is uh, used as a write to private copy on write page this is uh, this is used as a virtual memory that is a copy on write pages this is also the copy on write pages after both processes have mapped the private copy on write object after process 2 writes to a page in the private area this is after the both processes have mapped the private copy on write object that is used as a copy on write object after the both the pages have mapped then after process 2 writes to a page in the private area this is how the write the page to the private area that is a copy on write page this is when the fault handler noticed that the protection exception was caused by the process trying to write a page in the private copy on write area it creates a new copy of the page in the physical memory updates the page table entry to the points to the new copy and then restores the write permission to the page as shown in the 30b this is the 30b that shown how copy on the write is performed on the private area then next is your the fork function revisited that is a how fork function is revisited when whenever we use the 
memory mapping. This says when the fork function is called by the current process, the kernel creates a various data structure for the new process and assigns it a unique PID that is your process ID. To create the virtual memory for a new process, it creates exact copy of the current process NM structure, area structure and the page to A1. So how fork function is used by creating or by using the NM structure, area structure, page table. When the fork returns in the new process, the new process now has an exact copy of the virtual memory that it has existed when the fork was called. Then next is your executable VE function revisited. That is how executable file can be used or the function can be revisited. This is virtual memory and the memory mapping also plays a role or the important role in the process of loading the programs into the memory. Now that we understand this concept, we now understand that how exe ve function can logically or really loads and executes the programs. Suppose that the program running in the current process makes the following call. This is the function that is used. One is a dot out. This is a file name. This is the parameter null null. This is the executable function loads and runs the program contained in the executable object file. That is the object file name is a dot out within the current process. Effectively replacing the current program with the a dot out program. Loading and running a dot out requires the following steps. So it requires the following steps. First of all, what are the steps that is used? Deleting the existing user areas. That is a uh, before that prior if there is any area that is available, it deletes the existing user areas. Then map the private areas that is map the private shared object with the next private shared object. So that is the next step that is how to load and run the a dot out file. Then map the shared file that is how to map the or mapping the shared file so that linking can be done with the shared object with the library function that is library c dot so. Then set the program counter. So that next instruction can be mapped or next instruction can be fetched. So setting the program counter that is a PC. The last thing that exe ve that is executable does it to set the program counter in the current process context to point to the entry point in the text area. The next time this process is scheduled it will begin execution from the entry point. Linux will swap in the code and data pages as needed. Next, user level memory mapping with the mmap function. That is how mmap function is used or how mmap function is used for the user level memory mapping. That can use the or Unix process can use the mmap function to create the new areas of the virtual memory and the map the object into these areas. So mmap function is used for the memory mapping, for the new area, for the virtual mapping means creating the uh, new areas as well as the mapping the object in the areas in those areas that is done by the memory mapping or the mm function This is a diagram that shows how the loader maps the area of the user address space. First of all, there is a user stack that is also a private that has a demand zero. Then there is a blank space. There is a memory mapped reason for the shared libraries that is a shared file back. There is a library C dot so that is used for the shared object that contains the data part that contains the text part. There is again the blank area. There is a runtime heap that is done via the malloc. There is the uninitialized data that is done by using the BSS. Then initialized data that is done by using the dot data. Then program text that is contained the text file. These are the private demand zero. These are the private demand zero private file back. This is the a dot out that is the data text. So these are the 
content how loader maps or how loading can be performed on the areas of the user at the space so one is your program text one is your initialized data uninitialized data runtime heap map remap reason user stack this is the uh, example that is shown with the help of the c language this is the coding how map remap function is used there are two header file that is used one is your uni uni that is your unified standard dot out that contains a library function that is unified or that is used in the unix operating system in the same way there is a sys mmam that is a system main management file or the memory management dot h the map function asks the kernel to create a new virtual memory area preferably one that start at the header start and to map a contiguous chunk of the object specified by the file descriptor ft to the new area the contiguous object chunk has a size of the length bytes and starts at an at an offset of offset bytes from the beginning of the file this says map remap function is used to create the new virtual address space that is used as the or that start at the address start to map a contiguous chunks of the object that specified by the file descriptor fd to the new area figure 32 depicts for the meaning of these argument the prot argument contains bits that describes the access permission of the newly mapped virtual memory area that is the vm prot bits in the corresponding area set these are the uh, various fields that is used one is prot executes that is the pages in the area consist of the instruction that may be executed by the cpu so prot execute contains the various instructions contains the area or contains uh, store the area that contains various instruction that may be executed by the cpu one is your prot read that is the pages in the area may be read then prot write then pages in the area may be written then prot none that is pages in the area cannot be accessed so these are the various arguments various bits various structure that is used with the prot argument so prot execute prot read prot write prot none that is execute means executes the instruction read the instruction write the instruction cannot be accessed this is a visual interpretation of the mm map and map arguments this is the di disk file a specified file the uh, file description that is the ft this is the process virtual memory there is a length in terms of the bytes offsets this is the byte this is the starting phase that is the address chosen by the kernel this says the flag argument consists of bits that describe the type of the mapped object so these are the flags that is used or flag arguments is generally used or mostly used to describe the type of the mapped object if the map in and flag bit is set then the backing store is an anonymous object and the corresponding virtual pages are demand zero map private indicates a private copy on the right object that is a map private is used for the private copy and the shared pri uh, shared object is used for the sharing object Like uh, like this one, map shared indicates a shared object. For example, buffer p that is your buff c equals to m map minus one size prot read that is used for the reading the op uh, operations. Map private means using the private instructions or indicates the private write on object. Then there is a map n n, there is a zero, there is a zero that asks the kernel to create a newly or read only. why read only this is read only demand zero why demand zero there is a zero area of the virtual memory containing size bytes if the call is successful then the buff contains the address of the new area this is the diagram that shows uh, how uh, m map function is used then next is your mun map that is a mun map function deletes the reason of the virtual memory that is the role of the mun map function the mun map function deletes the area starting at the virtual address start and consisting of the next length bytes 
so it deletes the area that start at the virtual address and deletes the or consists of the file of the next length bytes subsequent references to the deleted reason results in the segmentation now next is your dynamic memory allocation no time is left for the today's class now let's see with the help of ppts what is left the same concept whenever we use the private uh, shared data or the private data then we use the concept that is a copy on the right sometimes two processes needs private writable copies of the same data that is a copy on right then expensive solution is that make the two separate copies in the memory that is the what is the solution maintains the two separate copies that is a copy on write that is uh, used for the private object often writing is allowed but not always done the solution is that find both processes that is a pt as a at the same physical memory space then in both the processes mark the page as the read only so in for both the processes mark the page as a read only that is a read only object when either attempt to write copy just that page means uh, the page that is required only copy that page do not attempt to share or do not attempt to fetch the next pages or the further pages then mark both the copies writable and restart the instruction this is the classic example of the lazy evaluation this is the example that is used by the map and map then next says uh, the map len byte starting at offset of the file that is a len byte starting at the offset specified by the file descriptor that is the fd preferably at the at the start that is it start at the zero and it end with the one then what are the pro function that is used one is read one is write what are the flags that is used one is private one is shared this is example in the c language how to search how to copy now what is the summary of the memory system that is a cache memory purely a speed up technique behavior invisible to the application programmer and the os operating system that is purely a speed up technique new technique enhanced technique Uh, purely a behavior that is invisible to the application programmer and the operating system implemented totally in the hardware <coughs> sorry that is the uh, cache memory then virtual memory that supports many os related functions that supports many operating system also like unix linux windows then next uh, what are how to uh, create the process that is the process creation for initialization and then using the poking the children then uh, virtual memory also supports the task switching also supports the protection memory management then it also combines or it also combines the com implementation of the hardware and the software that is the software management of the tables allocations hardware access of the tables hardware caching of the table entries that is your tld this is the way how memory system is used so thank you so much everyone now if you have any doubts then please text the doubt and i will answer you but before that let's take a quick review what we have covered in the today's class we have started with the chapter number 9 that is a virtual memory continuous these are the topics that is covered one is p6 or the i7 address translation then linux memory management linux page fault handling memory mapping so these are the four topics that we have covered in the today's class uh, we have started with the intel p7 uh, p6 or the uh, co intel core i7 any processor that is used that is fundamental what are the history that is used that is first of all there is a pentium pro then pentium 2 pentium 3 so these are the history of the different pentium processors then we have discussed how uh, dynamic ram is used as a processor package and used for the l1 cache l2 cache as well as the tlv that is your translation look aside buffer 
then uh, what are the review of the abbreviations what are the abbreviation that is used we have discussed like vpo ppo vpn vpn co plb plbi ci ct then we have discussed how translation or address translation is done uh, with the help of the p6 with the help of the or in terms of the processor This is P6 two-level page table structure. That is how a uh, two-level page table structure is performed on the P6. This is the page directory, page tables. This is 10244 byte page table entry. Then P6 page table entry. That is your PTE. How PTE is used as a physical base address. Then PDE page table uh, page directory entry. Then how P6 page table map maps the virtual address to the physical ones then how to present or the presentation or representation of the virtual address space then next is your p6 tlb translation that how our tlb translation is done in that uh, in the p6 that is the result that is the next part virtual address part then p6 tlb how tlb is done on the p6 then we will discuss how to translate with the P6 TLBs. That is the P6 TLB or the page table translation. Then we will discuss about the L1 cache access, how to uh, translate and how to access the L1 cache, how to speed up the L1 access. Then Linux, uh, how Linux organizes the virtual memory as a collection of the areas that is also known as the segments. One is your PGD, that is your page directory as uh, address, VM prod, VM flags. Then uh, we also discuss about the Linux page fault handling, that how page fault handling is done or uh, how page fault handler is performing the page fault or uh, addressing the page fault handling. Then next we have discussed about the memory mapping next topic that is how to uh, map the mem memory that is the creation of the new VM area is done by using the memory mapping. That is how to create the VM area struct area can be backed regular file can be used nothing that is a BSS file. Then uh, we have discussed one concept that is a copy and write concept that is used for the private area object or the private object area then user level memory mapping how memory mapping is done for the user level then memory system summary so this is a summary which we have covered in the previous class cache memory virtual memory combination of the hardware and the software implemented now if you have any doubts then please text the doubt and i will answer you and in the tomorrow's class, I will start the topic that is a dynamic memory allocation. So that's all for today's session. Thank you so much, everyone.